what we'll cover today is what, is, what does it uh, mean to stay current in today's business culture? How can a culture of collaboration and novel ideas be nurtured in your office and your organization? And how can you adopt this mindset of innovation and change? Um, uh, today, I would like to welcome our guest, uh, Prasoon Mishra, PhD. Uh, Dr. Mishra, who was formerly with Genetech, NCI, and NIH, is the founding president and CEO of the American Association for Precision Medicine, better known as AAPM, and chair of ACT, AAPM's Coronavirus Task Force, leading research on preventing and curing chronic disease. Uh, Prasoon is also the founder and CEO of Agility Pharmaceuticals, a pharmaceutical company committed to revolutionizing drug delivery and uh, discovery and development through technology, big data, robotics, and artificial intelligence. He is also a serial entrepreneur who founded his first company after graduating high school and his second company after uh, completing his PhD. Since then, he has accumulated a wealth of experience by building investing and advising numerous other companies. He's also an investor, co-founder and board member for several corporations focused on accelerating drug discovery and development data analytics with numerous publications, patents, and awards. He is leading research currently, uh, research efforts focused on preventing and curing chronic disease, not only treating the sick, but also providing knowledge and tools to do, for individuals to live longer and healthier lives. Today, Dr. Mishra will share his vast experience and insights as an innovator and serial entrepreneur. Prasoon and I have known each other now for quite a long time, and I'm, I'm very happy to have him here, and I think we'll all really enjoy this talk. Prasoon. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to you know uh, Med Labs uh, uh, in a talk actually, and the responsibility that uh, uh, has been given uh, to me was uh, you know to uh, to share some of our experiences that we have been having in the area of innovation, and I thought to give you the you know seven secrets to innovation actually. So what we have learned, and as a community, because you know Med Labs, GHIN, you know uh, GHIF, AAPM, this is one big uh, family. So we thought to share these seekers with you actually and uh, and uh, I also thought as a bonus since you are you know part of the community it will give you uh, you know seven secrets to you know uh, you know leadership actually so that you'll get as a bonus actually so uh, let's so let's dive in, in and uh, let me share my screen uh, so as as you know as you know the title of the talk is you know seven secrets to driving uh, innovation and I lead an organization, as Gary said, you know, American Association for Precision Medicine, which is a nonprofit organization, which is catalyzing healthcare transformation by fostering breakthrough innovation. So we are at AAPM.health. Uh, our annual meeting website is A2PM.org, and we have a huge data AI community. And you can look up, look us up at uh, dance.ai, actually. And we also have our meetup group uh, that meets uh, every month, uh, and you are welcome to be part of that. And AAPM APM is bringing together the stakeholders, which um, are, include the, the four pieces of precision medicine, that's patient, providers, public health planners, and payers uh, to cat, you know, catalyze collaboration and innovation. The goal is to accelerate the field of precision medicine and transform patient health, actually. So that's our at-large goal. And what APM has built over the years is um, uh, in, an innovation ecosystem, actually. We call it AIC. Uh, uh, so the ecosystem has technology partners. So, one of the biggest technology companies, investors, member companies, you know, hospital, healthcare institutions. We have startups actually, and the list is growing, um, and academic institutions actually, who are, you know, in, including government, they're also part of the ecosystem. And uh, uh, together, you know, we incubate ideas, provide training, uh, mentorship, advice, as well as funding, um, initial funding uh, to um, try out those ideas actually. So, you know, I just wanted to leave you with this, that AIC is a unique ecosystem system of experts and you know and corporations providing domain expertise in mentoring um, ecosystem connects uh, funding and uh, in, uh, to foster data driven innovation uh, and and so what is innovation actually so that that's the you know that brings uh, that uh, this way we dive directly into the topic so the act innovation in fact is an act or process of introducing new ideas devices or methods actually so I'll you know you can just um, uh, keep that in mind 
the act uh, or process of introducing new ideas, devices, or methods that uh, constitutes innovation. And innovation is usually led by, uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneurs or, uh, you know, the, the process is called entrepreneurship, which refers to an individual that has an idea and intends to execute on that idea, usually to disrupt you know, the current market with a new product or service, actually. And there are two types of entrepreneurship. So, so the one is SME uh, entrepreneurship. This is a small and medium enterprise. It usually depends on, it, it is based on an existing idea, actually. And uh, so, for example, service businesses. And it's if you show the cash flow, usually the cash flow is uh, you know positive, but eventually, you know, uh, it tapers off actually as the as the need for the product or service dies off. Um. And the second innovation, the second entrepreneurship model is innovation entrepreneurship, where you are basically constantly innovating and you know starting a business with a unique idea, product, or or a service actually, and, and usually it requires a big you know uh, in, infuse of cash. So you know, that's why there are multiple stakeholders and there is a global market. You know, but then once uh, once it you know uh, it's successful, it, uh, it it can be a very much rewarding and return on investment could be you know amazing so so then so a lot of people you know confuse innovation and invention actually so these two are uh, uh, different uh, uh, words actually so invention is sort of a discovery you know and that uh, drives you uh, know in, 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 you know innovation actually but then innovation really is commercialization of uh, invention uh, or discovery actually so in so the, in in terms of formula innovation each equals to invention into commercialization actually so few examples I can just, you know, kind of crystallize them in your minds. This is, you know, Xerox Park actually in, um, you know, here in Palo Alto uh, discovered the Windows icon mouse pointer actually, but Apple actually in the early years saw the promise and commercialized it actually. So this was uh, um, so invented by Xerox Park, commercialized and, um, you know, so that in innovation, real innovation was made by, you know, commercializing the invention so I think it, it it could be you know kind of a co um, uh, in, uh, innovation innovation model and there's other examples in the biotech world so recombinant insulin was uh, you know uh, discovered at Genentech and then Eli Lilly was uh, the first the biggest uh, you know uh, stakeholder in the insulin market they used to sell uh, pig you know uh, derived insulin in the market and Genentech Eli Lilly partnered where Genentech gave them the recipe and the bacterial cultures that they mass produce and uh, you know, and uh, sold those recombinant insulin to their customers, actually. So this is, uh, you know, invention and commercialization coming together and then co-innovation model. And same is true with Tamiflu. Gilead was the one who, you know, discovered Tamiflu and then, you know, a licensing agreement was made between Roche and together they uh, worked on uh, the, in, you know, the commercialization. So it was, uh, you know, co-innovation, actually. So, and... So the innovation process is, you know, kind of, uh, you know, if you are, if you are, you want to lead the uh, innovation entrepreneurship, uh, um, uh, you know, become an innovation entrepreneur actually, and you want to lead innovation uh, entrepreneurship culture in your organization, you have to follow, uh, you know, the process diligently. So first, actually, you know, uh, so if you are a startup, you have to, you know, have a management team actually, and you, know, you have to choose those team members very carefully because, you know, uh, so in their leadership style, culture, you know, uh, and compatibility fit, actually, because this is the core group of, uh, group of uh, people who drive the vision of the company as well as, uh, you know, you know, the whole strategic innovation. And then the, you know, management team can appoint an innovation board. You know, they, this is a group of people who are in charge. It could be a sub team in the company, actually, besides your core commercialization idea, you know, this could be a, a innovation group that, uh, you know, is responsible for, um, you know, a, a kind of in, a, getting insights into what can be innovated, they can 
and, uh, and you know do exploratory runs and then finally make a decision to you know is is it worth commercializing or not actually so you know so the task force can you know gather information run innovation campaigns try you know identify intersections you know where innovation can be done based on the, the when that project goes in the ideation phase where you know ideas are being generated and they are you know now tested you know in terms of experiments actually and then with the data, the innovation board makes a go no go decision, and if it's it's a go, you know, then the product goes into development phase, where and as well in, and enters the commercialization pipeline. So that's basically the you know innovation process that you should diligently follow actually, and then. And then there are types of innovation. Uh, there, are, uh, uh, so there are several types of innovation, but I will just give you a, a, a ten types of innovation in different uh, aspects of a product, um, you know, development. Um, in, in, that includes configuration, you know, offerings, different types of offering, as well as experiences. So start with the you know the you know configuration um, aspect uh, so configuration you can you know change the profit model you know so example would be the new york times when we all pivoted to electronic you know um, uh, it also pivoted from its traditional uh, you know ad driven media model to digital uh, you know subscription model which has been very successful and Henry Ford, you know, in you can do innovation around network actually. And Henry Ford was the you know f, uh, you know first to control entire supply chain as a in, in as a part of strategy ladder called vertical integration. And the, so where you have a factory, then you have uh, distributors, and then you have uh, you know uh, the end user actually. So the, he, he so with this he was able to control all his supply chain. And this is not only utilized now in in car companies but also in in several other sectors actually. And you can also do innovation around structure. You know, you can structure times of individual like Google and some of the other companies have followed the 20% rule, which allows employees to work on site projects uh, to, you know, innovative projects to spend 20% of their time on a site projects. To, so that have led to, uh, you know, creation of Gmail and Google News and which has become their, you know, prominent revenue stream right now, actually. So also you can do innovation around processes, actually. So uh, McDonald's, actually you know encourage their franchises to develop uh, you know and launch their own food items actually leading to you know uh, um, you know some, several uh, uh, products including egg muffins those who have tried you know this was developed at uh, uh, by one of the franchise owners actually and then was scaled up in, in the bigger organization and offering, you can do innovation around offering, for example, you know, product performance, you can do you know, like Spotify created a seamless music streaming product, actually, that, you know, lapped competitors in terms of speed, responsiveness and user experience. And that's how Spotify gained an edge, actually, as well as you can do innovation around product systems where Apple has, like example is Apple has built an extensive network of products that work together, creating an additional value for user and then, you know, interdependent you know, force folks to buy the, this, you know, same product because they work together well, actually. So and then you are, you know, investing in families uh, that are using that innovation. And uh, uh, then coming to experience, which is, you know, um, you know, like a Ritz Carlton, Apple, their big in experience, but there are other examples like, uh, you know, you can do innovation and service like Amazon has done, right? So Amazon, uh, you know, comes with, with a free expedite shipping model, which can have product come to your house as faster, uh, fast as within two hours in, in some metro areas, actually. And if you live in a city like San Francisco and you get dressed, get to your car and go and park, you know, and by the time two hours has passed, so I think it, this has defeated that, you know, the, the, it's a race against time. So that's where Amazon has you know, gained uh, um, uh, edge, actually, as well as you can do innovation around channel. So uh, Nespresso actually locks it in customers with its uh, Nespresso club, actually, and as well as they, again, sell ongoing, uh, you know, uh, sale of coffee pods, they make their uh, revenue. So that, that's their, you know, uh, channel innovation right there to make make, uh, you know, Nespresso club uh, members, actually. Yeah, of course, brand innovations are more common. And, you know, one of the examples could be Patagonia's brand activism that links to environmental causes. So you know, that gives its a unique position in the outdoor apparel market. And, of course, customer engagement. Mercedes has launched uh, an augmented reality owner's manual that replaces the likely predecessors. That was a big, you know, book, actually. And then it has access to also driver 
and card data that you can just take a look at it. So it's basically now it's changing the games of the you know of the uh, market actually. So this is a and uh, folks will follow. Uh, so uh, innovation is very complex and ideas are you know are random and uh, you know basically there is a a lot of you know uh, a lot of things you can think and implement. But you know the key word is strategic continuous innovation and specific to your organization actually again strategic continuous innovation so how do you have you know how do you implement strategic continuous innovation in your organization so you know so uh, be clear with the strategy of your company you know uh, from the beginning you know the strategy might evolve or you know change in future but you have to be clear what you want to do in the beginning actually decides in which areas you want or need to innovate get uh, you know informed and in, in get information you know at, at, from as many places as you can and as well as inspiration actually you know uh, and uh, create ideas using as many people as possible in the company and perhaps with the open innovation even outside the company the best example is if you are uh, market if your product in the market you can engage customers and giving you feedback and innovative ideas to improve the product uh, so uh, test your ideas and and you know as easily and cheaply as possible because if you're working 10 ideas probably one will succeed you know or, or none succeed so I think you would like to do this as lean as possible. So, and and finally, decide on clear, uh, determined basis if this is an idea that you should you know, develop and commercialize. That has to be a corporate level decision, and then that has to be because then if you are committed, you are committed towards commercialization and bringing that product to market. Actually, so. That brings us to, you know, the moment that we were all looking for. If you have a strategic, uh, uh, you know, continuous business model worked out, then what are the, you know, seven secrets to innovation, actually? So uh, with that, uh, the number one is uh, empowerment. Uh, so always practice empowerment in your organization. It's leader to jo leader's job is to motivate people to go places they wouldn't otherwise go, you know, the, and, and there are several examples, actually. And, you know, the it's a, you you know, motivation wins the wars. It's you know uh, always the teams that are highly motivated. You know, win the war or game or or the companies. You know, win. Uh, and then the teams that are demotivated actually. So for this to happen, what would you like? So the three pillars: clear vision and tools to be successful. Uh, outline a clear vision for your entire organization and provide your, you know, uh, in frontline employees the right technology to do their job and uh, uh, not only technology, but funding and, you know, as well as all the tools to be successful and culture sense of belonging, give them a solid platform where they can provide their feedback and ideas to, uh, to the management team, a corporate back actually. So they feel sense of belonging, sense of security and recognize and, and, and give feedback and receive feedback. It is important that you provide effective feedback and recognition on a regular basis, you know, and even if the feedback is negative. And sometimes when the feedback is negative, the urgency is more urgent. You cannot, you know, uh, sit on a feedback for a week or a month and then give it a month later and where a lot of damage has been done. And then uh, you cannot be blamed to employee because it was your fault. You, have, you, were, you basically didn't uh, give that feedback so that they can correct their course and you know go on a on a right course so uh, key, so recognition and feedback is power, you know uh, helps uh, empower people actually and uh, and then that brings to you know secret two it's trust and honesty actually so the the best quote that i like on this is uh, you know by mark uh, benioff the chairman and ceo of salesforce he said the fourth industrial revolution starts with one very important point that's trust so, you know, you should, you always have to foster trust and, you know, honesty in your organization and in your personal, you know, uh, uh, personal philosophy, actually, and how, you know, how do we do that? So a culture of truth and integrity, you know, has an open communication culture, actually, and, you know, you, you should always keep your promises, actually, because that, you know, builds your credibility and integrity. Uh, and besides yours, look for other people's interest here. Yeah. So that's, that's very important, actually, and act with honesty 
integrity without hidden agendas, actually, because there is with, together you can go so far then, you know, and if you have something, you can just bring it to you know, ideas, you can bring it to the and then table and then let the team, uh, you know, bless you to work on your 20% of innovation time. Everything can be done, actually. So the uh, truth and integrity is the must principle of any team. And then you can, with truth and integrity, you can follow the 80-20 rule or um, Pareto's principle, which is, uh, uh, you know, identify 20% of inputs that are potentially the most productive and scale them, actually. That's how McDonald's got successful. That's how all, all big businesses, Google actually has a graveyard, actually where they have, you know, uh, put all the, you know, products that they have, you know, uh, killed, actually, it's, it, it's called, uh, you know, the website is killed by google.com, you can go and check all the, you know, all the products killed by Google, some of them were wildly successful. Um, and uh, so, uh, so, you know, the, so in communication, you have to uh, communication, 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 encourage healthy communication practices within workplace. Uh, this is the best way to nurture integrity in the workplace. And uh, so that, you know, uh, folks can come to you and say that this is a ghost project, actually, it's not, it's, it's not going to work. So then you can kill it and work on something. And, um, you know, they were teams focus on something bigger and better, actually. And, uh, so one of the best examples I can give you on this is uh, it, it's uh, uh, sorry uh, is uh, uh, by uh, uh, Lou Gerstner actually L L Lou was you know uh, uh, was hired as a chairman and uh, you know a CEO of IBM in 1993 when IBM was you know going through a turbulent times and and uh, uh, he is largely credited with uh, turning around RBM's uh, you know fortune actually that's uh, so he and he. He, uh, implemented an ethical leadership and trust model within IBM the time he you know, joined actually so uh, which included you know respect for others actually so the employees in their communities the employees are the, in the community that IBM is part of you know always you know give them top priority serve others make customers your main focus and your sh you know shareholders increase shareholders value show justice he you know created senior leadership groups uh, that worked with the you know during the transition to help uh, you know directed the change so it, he showed he showed justice this was done democratically actually and manifest honesty he 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 believed in employee skills and he valued their abilities and and he he, he knew that they can do then he assigned their jobs while the IBM was going through a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, changes and then you know sometimes and I have seen and also I you know you have to have uh, that vision of understanding what somebody is capable of sometimes they might not know but you know and then and then they will be surprised what they were able to accomplish uh, you know and once you have shown trust in them actually so that's the um, uh, and then build the community he invested in in he you know invested in building community he, he believed that I, IBM is the community which is you know technology driven and you know and and uh, focused on customer experience and quality actually based on these principles uh, driven by trust at its core you know he you know, Lou uh, Gerstner was able to transform IBM actually to become the leading company today. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the so with that actually with trust in your uh, core, uh, the second, uh, the third is actually the secret is. Uh, how uh, how do we create and nurture a community actually so that you know the, your organization it's a either it's a you know small large organization it's basically a community so you are the more and the more you you know bring people together the greater your community will become and then more innovation you will get so uh, so you know like i mentioned make customers a part of your community by taking their input on how to uh, make products better you know you have you know follow this is called contestification create contests for customers to generate the best ideas you know a lot of companies toyota did it actually tesla followed it actually you know uh, so and what are the pillars of community building there are four pillars engagement you know engage the community uh, and, uh, and develop you know develop the leaders of the community you know their skills uh, invest in leadership development um, and collaborate collaborate amongst you know within the organization you know with the community you know, uh, members as well as 
collab foster collaboration with key partners externally key partnerships building with external key stakeholders and decision makers so then you are now you know position yourself as a, one of the you know uh, 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 one of the part of the you know greater in ecosystem of the companies that are working in that sector actually so community is uh, you know uh, secret number three that brings to secret number four and which is a very important uh, smart secret which is you know uh, uh, define clear goals actually if you want to uh, you know if you want big innovation set uh, big and difficult goals to push people outside their comfort zones actually and this is true so you know apple google push their employees every day to step outside their comfort zone by using difficult goals that, you know, force their people to think and act in innovative ways, actually. So, you know, uh, this is a, and this is true, actually, the people who have higher goals, so aim for stars, you will fall on, if you fall, you fall on moon. So that strategy works uh, um, besides having, you know, uh, uh, lousy goals, actually. And your goals have to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, actually. And there's a lot of literature on that smart goal setting and you can read it i'll not spend much time on it uh, so we'll dive into um, a fifth secret and i think this comes with a bonus actually you have earned it so uh, fifth secret is a, a, a leadership, actually. Uh, and, you know, we all are great leaders, actually, in our own ways. And, you know, uh, uh, but I think constant improving our leadership skills, actually, based on the teams, based on the folks we communicate as, as you know, call for today's, you know, times, actually. And, uh, and great leaders are who are passionate about empowering people, speaking the truth, creating community, and in, in setting hard goals to play a major role in driving innovation, all the all the secrets that I have already told you. So that 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 comes to boils down to the leaders actually and their skills actually. So how to empower the leadership skills? You know, uh, uh, basically and. Uh, so there are, you know, uh, 10 different principles. Number one is engage in honest, open communication. Again, going back to communication, connect with your team members, you know, sometimes have one-on-ones, sometimes they will not tell you all those things in, in group meetings, but they will be able to come up with the brilliant, uh, you know, ideas and they will be able to tell you in, in a, in a you know, one-on-one meetings. Encourage personal, professional growth yourself and your, you know, your teams, actually. Keep a positive attitude. You know, I know that entrepreneurship and running a company it can be sometimes overwhelming, but keep always a positive attitude. There's all, tomorrow will be a good, you know, a new day, actually. Teach employees, and, you know, and instead of giving orders, actually. Always invest in your employees because these are the folks who can become your assets in the, in the future. You know, you will never know that who will become your right and left hand growing going forward actually or even even after you can be your successor actually set clear employee goals and expectations give direct feedback about their performance and precisely and ask for feedback on your leadership actually so in on your leadership because you can you know pivot your leadership based on who are and how your team wants to be led but let the final decision be yours because it's your leadership style be open to new ideas always be open to new ideas always keep listening you may never know how in the different ways universe is trying to tell you something actually understand your own motivation what motivates you spend time and you know and um, uh, and you know keep constantly you know uh, you know constantly learning actually so then the bonus content is seven secrets to uh, you know uh, uh, seven leadership secrets actually to improving your leadership skills so the first is determination towards your goal, firm determination. So uh, you have to be very determined towards your goal. Uh, that's the first quality of the leader. The difference between the impossible and possible is lies in man's determination. The second is it, you sh one should be remain unaffected by society or social opinion. If you have an idea, don't let the other's opinion um, you know, affect your reality, actually. So it's said that a wise man makes his own decision and ignorant man follows a public opinion. What I'm trying to say is don't let public opinion, in fact, you know, affect your your vision and mission and vision because everybody, you know, opinion is there, you know, at that point sometimes that that's their opinion that point if you go and you know recheck them some time back their opinion may change so i think that's the but then your vision is you know you know what you're planning and your vision is you know really crystallized so crystallize your vision don't be affected by public opinion respect your gurus mentors board members advisors and investors because they're all there for you know helping to for you to become successful 
and maintain a mental equilibrium actually you know as i mentioned you know the the um, uh, it's it, you know the leaders are the, they're exposed to different situations every day different conversations you know they that incur different feelings actually so um, uh, so mental maintaining a mental equilibrium helps and also provides a soil for creative intelligence to manifest you know i ching has a quote this that says genius is the ability to receive from the universe so the universe includes uh, your uh, employees your you know team members your advisors like i have said mentioned so be open to that and also always remember your beliefs become your thoughts your thoughts become your words your words become your actions your actions become your habits and your habits become your values and your values become your destiny so in fact your your beliefs and thoughts shape your destiny so think good things and uh, and you know have nice beliefs actually so keep a mental equilibrium and have self restraint you know and whenever i think about self restraint i think about gandhi uh, self restraint is the uh, very keystone uh, of uh, you know ethics and wow taking it's a muscle that you have to flex actually self you know it's a wow taking is a muscle and that you can flex using self restraint to you know uh, uh, in in many different ways and you know there is another quote that he says there is always a limit to self indulgence but none to self restraint so in all parts of life actually and then uh, the sixth secret is keep a balanced diet actually let uh, uh, food be the medicine and the medicine be thy food so it's a quote by Hippoc hippocrates which is a, who is a father of modern medicine actually let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food and so i i just went through quickly but i think i just wanted to you know empower the leader within you and, and you know and i hope uh, hope uh, you know i gave you some uh, food for thought and master you know your leadership style we all are different we all work differently think differently and there are several leadership styles but i'll just focus on these uh, six actually so first is commanding leaders the commanding leaders make decisions alone and give orders to members to achieve those goals a commanding leader can make decisions quickly this saves time and is helpful especially during crisis an example is winston churchill and he um, was specially known for you know power he's a powerful orator and uh, you know often was able to inspire others to take action simply where his commanding speeches and viewpoints actually and he was very well respected for that uh, and vision leaders and i would uh, i would uh, bulk most of the you know uh, successful startup tech leaders in this uh, are able to see bigger picture and set the overall goals for the team this type of leader inspires creativity and teamwork um, as and as team members are encouraged by you know big achieving bigger and you know goals uh, as they are working in, in their day to day jobs actually and and again Steve Jobs is a, you know a poster child for this but many tech CEOs as I mentioned fit into this uh, you know stereotype Jobs build a company that completely change uh, you know multiple industries and he did so singularly by looking at the possibilities. Uh, uh, no one that no one yet have ever considered actually you know so and then the third type is affiliative leaders so these are the leaders who show warmth and acceptance to the members create emotional bonds with them you know because of the warmth uh, you know warmth provided members feel safe and have stronger sense of belonging to the organization and they perform better in fact google has done a survey and they found that you know feeling safe within an organization is you know is the, one of the most key factors to productivity you know if teams that are very productive they feel safe actually within the organization and for example, Dalai Lama brings people along with him and into a bigger picture of, uh, you know, con contempt and safety, actually. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, uh, the next three are, and I, while I'll say that, you know, keep in mind, you keep evaluating what kind of, uh, you know, leader you are, or are you a mixture of, uh, you know, a couple of these leadership, your style is, you know, mixture of these leadership styles. So the next is democratic leadership. It's also uh, known as, a, uh, you know, uh, participative leadership or shared leadership is making decisions together with the team members, regardless of the rank and closely working together with the team to achieve the best results. And JFK 
JFK, you know, John F. Kennedy was a successful democratic leader. When, when Kennedy handled the Bay of Pigs situation, which was, you know, abortive invasion of Cuba at the Bay of Pigs, he gave everyone in his, in his circle a clear voice. And the way he made decisions had changed the decision, decision making for the modern era. It has been, you know, example, actually. So, uh, and then uh, pace setting, actually, pace setting a style of leadership when a leader leads from the front, actually, constantly sets higher standards for their team and expects them to exceed with a minimum management. So a lot, example is Jack Welch. He is a former, uh, Jack is a former CEO of GE, uh, General Electric. He despised micromanaging. He didn't really like it. And then thought, he thought that leaders need to focus more on setting examples and deadlines. Uh, that's the essence of pace setting leader, actually. And then he has been very successful in his style. And coaching leader, and this is sometimes a lot of startup, you know, uh, uh, founders have to wear this hat where, uh, you know, uh, uh, where uh, the, you mentor more inexperienced team members as they join, and um, uh, these uh, they help uh, the members to better their capabilities and performance by constantly providing them feedback and you know and uh, and and where they can grow and training and feedback actually. And the example will be John Wooden, who won more NCAA basketball championship than any other coach, and he's a, a successful coaching uh, leader actually. He's an example, and he had very specific coaching model that focused on conveying information as opposed to the course correcting you know model that many have used so these are the six um, examples actually i can uh, you know so and you can see where you are and you can be you can have a hybrid style depend and you know uh, based on your personality and i'll give you eight tips for good leadership be brave don't run away from challenges Always be crystal clear in your communication, your mess in your messages. You know when you communicate, keep your confidence level high. Uh, your positive attitude is key to successful leadership. Acknowledge and appreciate the work done by others. You know in in a, uh, in. It, you know, uh, inculcate a sense of responsibility for people you are leading. Uh, and so it's not just you is responsible, everybody's responsible, actually, let your failures be the stepping stones to your success, actually. So that's a don't get discouraged by that uh, use as a stepping stone, uh, delegate tasks to your team members and encourage their creativity, actually. So this is the so that's the that, you know, wraps up the fifth secret and the bonus uh, leadership secret, uh, you know, that you got and then uh, the sixth secret is is, you know, I think has Apple written all over it, actually. So uh, be first to create, be first, you know, create unique and great experiences and change the rules of the game. When I say be first, you know, the first, uh, you know, uh, uh, Coca-Cola was the, you know, first, uh, you know, everybody is, you know, you, people even go and order Pepsi and they say, can I get a Coke actually, you know, so when you are first, I think you already have, you know, in, you already are in minds and hearts of people, your name is engraved and that gives a lot of leverage actually. So be first, create unique and great experiences actually. And so great experiences are listen to, comes from listening to customers. Uh, you know, is you know, is you know, are, are you adding value? Is is, is it intuitive and unique? Actually, is um, uh, is it built with scalability in mind? Uh, clearly expresses benefits. Is it worth talking about? And if it's talking about, is the product shared? Right. I think that's that should be your you know constant um, uh, constant experience, uh, constant product development experience. So and you know change r rules of the game. So what do I mean about mean by that? Change rules of the game. So you know. Like, so innovate around customer experience by benchmarking against the very best model in customer service. Like example, Steve Jobs received inspiration for Apple stores from the Ritz Carlton model. Like I have already mentioned Ritz Carlton, you know, they, so where people genuinely care. So you foster a culture where people genuinely care and they're ready to help actually. And they're not there to sell you something. They're just ready to help but they hire great people who care. And then, you know, and, and they, you know, further your brand. So that's the, it's just one example, but what, can experience making be used for so you know can can be uh, um, uh, so uh, so what can be sorry experience experiential marketing be used for so this can be used for build relationship uh, raise awareness increase loyalty establish relevance uh, encourage uh, you know interact and product uh, interaction and product trial create memories actually you know that's all the product market is stimulate positive word of mouth 
change the mind of uh, you know dissatisfied customers uh, that you know that you should always uh, you know uh, cater them create a product desire you know uh, and verify the target audience that you know it's it's the right audience that you are targeting increase the return on marketing you know on marketing investment so the investment that you're making you know i think you should be getting returns from that and that here we come the most important secret which is the seventh secret and i think i and there is no secret what is this actually yeah but it's a it's most important secret actually and what is the seventh secret so the seventh secret is to remember all six secrets and practice them to foster innovation in your organization actually so it's a it's the most important secret because you have to remember just don't just forget actually human beings are you know they just listen something and then they go with the, their life and they forget actually so that's all in our nature so uh, basically so i have you know i i have trained myself uh, to uh, have some memory uh, you know kind of a, a, a exercise that i i use to train myself actually so my mind so i think so uh, practical empowerment is e right empowerment live by trust and honesty let's recap it's number two secret number two it's t uh, third is create and nurture a community c uh, fourth is define clear goals that's a g uh, fifth is strengthen your leadership l and six is create great experiences that e actually so i think it's etc can be etc gle what can be that so i think it's a there's a you we all have heard or saw this um, uh, TV series. So it glee with uh, what's one E, ETC, et cetera. Just remember uh, that. And then the, the bonus content, you know, for the leadership, uh, you know, I think it's a dog MSD, actually, you know, D is determination uh, towards your goal. O is remaining unaffected by the you know social opinion. Opinion O comes from opinion. Having respect for the guru is G, or it comes from uh, you know guru. Meaning a mental maintaining a mental equilibrium is M, and having self restraint S, keeping a balanced diet is D actually. And and I think the dog MSG MSD is uh, you know I think I I found a one picture on memory. I thought this helps you you know how to find hidden. MSG in your dog's food, G is replaced by D actually, you know, so uh, yeah, so hope this too help you, you know, remember the six secrets, you know, for uh, the innovation and the leadership and um, help you empower your organization and uh, culture and products in your organization. And uh, thank you very much. You know, and, and my email is very simple, prasoon.mishra at aapm.health. And if you would like to, uh, you know, hear more about the organization, our, you know, our innovation ecosystem as as well as our events, it's info at aapm.health. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Soon, thank you. What a spectacular talk, leveraging all those years of experience and mentoring. Um, that was invaluable. Um, I wanna let everyone know that there'll be multiple ways to access this talk again, so I'm sure a lot of us would like to listen to it again and take all of these uh, pearls that Prasoon gave us, and it'll be available both on the, uh, the MedLabs uh, ZGC uh, GHIN uh, YouTube channel, as well as on Global Health Impact Network um, on the uh, InnoTox community and the MedLabs community. So, uh, and I posted some information if anyone, ways to contact us if anyone's interested in joining GHIN. Um, okay, let's get to some questions. There were a bunch of questions. Um, I guess I'll start with, so the presentation really uh, uh, focused on the enterprise level and large organization, um, uh, you know, from the large organization approach about how a system can integrate um, a, um, an innovation approach to their organization. But what about, there's probably a lot of individuals certainly that are coming from GHIN that are smaller practices or smaller organizations who have ideas, who um, want to be innovators and just don't know how to start. Um, and, you know, one is, I guess the first question is, how do you take a smaller organization of zero to 10 people and take this concept and integrate it into foster innovation? And then for the individual, the individual clinician who has an idea, what resources are out there for those individuals that they can take advantage of and not have to worry about implementing a system like this. 
Yeah, I think that's the that's a very good question, Gary, because you know that's the precisely what we have kept in mind. And actually, you know, you know, you and I have talked about this uh, some time. And how do we build that gap, right? So in you know AAPM at AAPM, we we you know handle that by you know creating focus communities, actually focused uh, you know events, you know meetup groups where people can meet you know like-minded individuals. They can you know uh, they can bounce ideas, actually you know uh, identify core team members that we are interested in that moving forward. We have also worked with, uh, we have also AAPM angels and investors, you know, uh, community that uh, also, you know, uh, is there uh, kind of helping, uh, you know, put the initial funding actually. So if, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, AAPM itself is raising a foundation fund that, uh, you know, uh, we, that will invest in the early stage ideas actually in, in, in the form of grants. So I think that's, uh, so we are doing all those as, a community to kind of bridge that uh, you know gap that exists like you mentioned right in the in the innovation community which is which is just uh, in 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 the in our community, you know, to foster innovation, and I'm, I'm, and I have known that Gary, you are also working on, and we, have, you know, we have you kind of brainstormed this. How do we partner? So I think you have a GHIN, you know, network and the fund. So would you like to talk about uh, the, you know, your uh, initiatives on this, Gary? Yeah. Sure, that would be great. You know, and again, I come from that perspective, right? You know, after 35 years of healthcare now, of course, like you, I'm a serial entrepreneur, but where do you start, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a clinician in a small practice and you've got a great idea, you know, uh, how, do you, how do you start? So we, we started Global Health Impact Network about two and a half years ago with the idea of how do we create a network and a network of communities focused on professions, specialties, special interest areas, focused on digital health that promotes the ability for clinicians to actively participate. I think, you know, the first place to start is there are a lot of clinicians out there that are feeling quite disenfranchised in the face of ineffectual, ele ineffectual electronic health care records. Um, and complex, you know, complex workflows that make our days longer as opposed to shorter because of digital health. So, you know, how do we create an environment that encourages clinicians input and clinicians innovation ideas to come up with solutions that make our lives easier as opposed to more complex. So Global Health Impact Network was that. And then the idea of a lot of clinicians when these ideas are in place wanna participate as investors, as advisors, as consultants. And that's why we started Global Health Impact Fund as well, would kind of democratize the process, get the clinicians involved. So very similar to what you've done with AAPM, um, we're very focused on creating an ecosystem around everything from idea generation all the way through commercialization. How do we create a network of communities that supports every step of the way? Prasoon and I have, have been talking together about creating an early funding and innovation, um, an, uh, an, an, an innovation center which focuses in on early ideas, right? Early mm -hmm. idea generation. You got an idea, how do you get from idea all the way to the point where you're ready to get into an accelerator? Mm -hmm. And we're also working together on an accelerator with Med Labs um, to accelerate those more um, advanced organizations that are now ready to go raise capital. Um, and then the idea that what do you do after that? You go through an accelerator most accelerators say, well, thank you very much for participating and you're on your own moving forward. But now we have our network, which then takes those companies and provides the appropriate ecosystem and resources to get through business development, marketing and sales, commercialization. So it's a complete end-to-end -end solution, which takes an army. You know, no, no network by itself can do that. And uh, Prasoon and I have been working feverishly on creating that more um, comprehensive uh, community environment. So thank you for, for, for asking that question. Thank you. Um, yeah, this has been, yeah, that's, a, I think it's a, it will change. It will be a big you know, game changer actually and help a lot of, you know, a lot of folks and, uh, you know, transform the future actually. Yeah. Right. So let, let's jump to a question or two from the audience. So um, let's see. Uh, Kumar asked, uh, we are soon starting a new company focused on providing drug discovery solutions to biopharma globally. Please suggest an unmet need in current market we can focus on. 
Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a broad question, right? So it's a I think you have to first identify. It looks like it's going to be a service providing organization where you are going to work with um, you know, work with uh, pharmaceutical companies and um, and uh, you know provide uh, kind of uh, you know um, and be kind of an extension to their research uh, organization. So I think there is a so there are uh, different areas actually, and I think I would not put ideas into your uh, mind, but I think if if you have a core technology and core, um, you know, expertise, and so then platform can be, you know, uh, therapeutic area agnostics. But if you have a specific platform that is a, for, for a specific, uh, you know, uh, therapeutic area, you know, then uh, like a cancer or diabetes, then then you that's your niche market actually. So so a general response to a general question. But I think yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a very exciting actually, Kumar actually, and then yeah, we can talk about it later later. Thank you. Right. And Kumar, there are, you know, again, between AAPM and GHIN, there are resources to help take those kind of concepts and, and develop them even further from within the resources that we have. So feel mm -hmm. free to reach out to us. Um, S. Gilprit uh, says, uh, thank you, Pursuant, for a great lecture. Um, how does one juggle innovation in the pandemic when everything is e-commerce? Yeah, that's that's a very good question, and the pandemic has proposed uh, a lot of you know challenges, right? Actually, but uh, you know then uh, uh, you know uh, the pivot, you know the point that I mentioned about pivot, right? You know the, there is a lot of opportunity about for e-commerce, right? Actually, so you know there is a and there is a lot of uh, you know opportunities in in you know digital innovation, right? So uh, so what uh, so the example, and I think I say sometimes when I give this lecture that are you going to innovate? Uh, you know, start a print magazine again? hope not right actually yeah so if the if the market that you are in is dying then you know it's better to you know pivot actually you know that's the so the, the what i'm trying to say is that always pivot and find new markets where innovation and pandemic has not deterred innovation it has accelerated innovation actually in 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 many different ways actually it's just you have to find your niche actually and again we can discuss about that and you know see see if we can um, you know what is your niche and how would you like to pivot but i think this is a, again a general answer to a general question <laughs> yeah and i think you know what i'll add on to that is you know we see a lot of this obviously on the venture capital side you know you are looking at companies of your invested in portfolio companies and who can plan on a pandemic right mm -mm -mm. um probably you know on the list of 100 things it's 101 that you're expecting to happen but you do have to be able to pivot in a way because the expectations are is that if you're building a business you you have to make a viable business that can generate revenue so all of a sudden let's say you're in a clinical study environment and all of a sudden a pandemic happens and everything gets shut down where do you go so a lot of companies have pivoted utilizing solutions related to the pandemic. But what I would venture to say as, you know, you have to be careful about when you make those decisions as well, because there has to be something on the other side of that, right? So if you all of a sudden completely pivot your business around the pandemic, and hopefully the pandemic will disappear and, and become less of an issue for us from a, from a commercialization and economic perspective, you don't want to be stuck with a solution that's completely focused on the on COVID, and then all of a sudden COVID's gone. Mm -hmm. So um, you you have to be able to plan in advance. Also, how do we then repivot back into, you know, the I, I, into the market so that we can continue our business and continue to generate revenue and scale our company? So that is something that you have to look at as well. Um, another question that was brought up. Uh, is do you have any tips for leading a team fully remotely and is uh, fully remote a good idea for long term? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so as I understand, you have a good idea, you know, uh, for long term, but you have a small team that's working fully remote. Actually, you know, welcome to, you know, uh, you know, today's world, actually. And that's how majority of the teams are working, actually. You know, in fact, uh, you know, in fact, teams were able to figure out the ways to work where, you know, you can e utilize a contract research organization or somewhere where you can do research in a different uh, country or, you know, or in, within your, uh, you know, uh, country of residence as well, where, you know, 
you can have your meetings and you know ideations and you know innovation you know all happening uh, virtually and i think that some of the companies like you know google you know i think uh, majority of tech companies uh, uh, twitter actually they all have embraced this change microsoft they all have embraced this change and they were able to very much successful in you know innovating remotely actually so i think it's a it's a you know possible but again that's a general question and gary any thoughts on that um well yeah you know we actually have built our entire business on a remote <laughs> model right and it's a global business so it is it's certainly um you know and and to answer that question pre-pandemic during pandemic and post-pandemic <laughs> by itself is also an interesting concept because you know if we were all answering this question a year and a half ago two years ago we would come up with a very different answer but now because of the pandemic we've been forced into an environment where we're solely or or 98 percent in a fully remote environment, technology hasn't necessarily completely caught up. We know the trans, you know, the transitions that Zoom has even made, um, and then healthcare, of course, the transition that we had to make to go to telehealth, which was, uh, you know, a, a vertical that was tagging along at a very slow pace until the pandemic, and then all of a sudden it exploded. But we're left with solutions that are not necessarily ideal for conducting care, which is related actually to the next question that, that, that we'll bring up. So what I will say is it's completely possible. The mm -hmm. solutions are out there, but it's really important that depending on what your, your, your business model is, that you have to take into account multiple aspects of how that virtual versus face-to-face -face, um, affects it, right? You know, let's look at telehealth. I mean, it's a perfect example. There's no way that we're going to make a transition to 100% telehealth, and you're talking to an anesthesiologist. <laughs> if you took any profession which is not does not lend itself to telemedicine, <laughs> <It's> anesthesiologist, <laughs> surgery, right? I mean, surgery even you could make an argument for. So, um, so the idea being is you have to be able to create a hybrid model that is able to address the face-to-face -face needs, the the virtual needs and the gray zone that happens in between those two. And how do you meld those into a solution that addresses all of the requirements of your business model? So I think it's a little more complex, but I, my answer, my short answer would be totally doable, but it takes a lot of work and a lot of attention to, to, to engage in the correct way. Um, Bob Sweeney, this will be the last question. It is 11 o'clock. We've had such a good uh, experience with today's talk. Um, Bob asked, healthcare, unlike most enterprises, is a business with a very personal patient to physician relationship. How does one scale that kind of business without losing this ingredient? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, Gary, would you like to take that, I think? Yeah, I think I would. Um, you know, Bob, <laughs> thanks for asking. Me. Um, a little teaser, probably. Bob's one of my partners. Um, so, um, you know, again, that's kind of along the lines of what I was just talking about is, you know, when, you, when you're looking at clinical solutions, whether they be electronic healthcare records to device, um, to platforms that work on workflow, there are a certain component of what we do that has to be physical. There's a certain component of what we do that can be virtual. And then there's that hybrid of what we call clicks and mortar right? Mm -hmm. It's, we can deploy an extender to the point of care with a remote patient monitoring bag and have uh, a clinician on the other end of it, a physician um, on, on the other end of it, and, and have a hybrid encounter with a patient. But how do, we, how do we optimize that encounter? Because at the end of the day, probably the most important part of that is the patient provider encounter, right? Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the day, that's why we practice healthcare, right? So how do we optimize that leveraging the technology that we have? Again, remote patient monitoring, chronic disease management platforms, artificial intelligence, virtual reality. We have all of that. And the digital health revolution is moving us in that direction. It's, it's incorporating those technologies into um, into what we do, but it's really important. Bob brings up a very important point. We still have to put ourselves in the shoes of the clinician and in the shoes of the, of the patients, right? And that's the whole premise behind what Prasoon is doing with AAPM and what GHIN is doing. How do we reinsert the two most important people in that 
um, the two most important people in that workflow, which are the patient and the provider. Everything else is fluff after that. So how do we optimize that encounter, leveraging both technology and the physical face-to-face -face component of it? So it's very, very important um, that that be paid attention to. And the only way to do that is to reinsert the clinicians and the patients into the decision and the development and the innovation process. And that's what we are trying to do with our two organizations. Would you agree with that, Prasoon? Yeah, I think I totally agree. And, and I think I, on an innovation point of view, I can I would like to add, so there is some of the organizations have realized that, you know, the random encounters that happen, that draw innovation actually in the office, right? You just don't bump into each other. And now they're, you know, some of the, you know, teams are compromised. And I can also relate that to physician patient, you know, which is a very intimate, uh, you know, interaction. So maybe I think as, as we come out of the graduate from the, you know, the community, like you said, you know, Gary, we can have a hybrid model, right? Where like the employee are following like you can work two three days and and then you can work remotely right and then a similar model can be you know you can see less often the physician but you, you there's a there's a lot of value actually you know in, in seeing a physician and that interpersonal interaction you know interaction actually that will help and yeah I think definitely and I, and I see a lot of questions in the in the chat and then we are here in all the questions you know that's why you know we are here our communities we are bringing the community together communities together to help uh, uh, you know drive innovation uh, uh, foster innovation, fund innovation, and scale innovation, actually. So uh, with that, actually, Gary, the floor is all yours. Thanks. So, uh, you know, again, there are a number of questions in here which we haven't had time to get to, and uh, Prasoon and I will be happy to respond to individuals from the, from the chat. So, Karina, if we can capture those, that would be great, um, and we can respond directly. We'll also, again, we have a, please, you know, uh, uh, come to the, uh, um, in a, the med labs uh, and also the you know, talks communities on the network, and we can continue the conversation. The whole reason that we have this network is that it shouldn't stop here. We want to continue the collaboration and the communication after this talk. So, please, if you if you join in, you can uh, continue post questions to to the entire group that way. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending and, and giving us an uh, an hour out of your day today on a and during a busy schedule. I would like to thank ZGC. G-H-I-N and A-A-P-M. And of course, I would like to thank Prasoon for a fantastic talk, um, which was filled with gems. Um, and we will, you know, like to continue this conversation post-talk, as I said, but on, on the network. So thank you everybody for attending and uh, please, you know, continue to attend our uh, events. We are very excited about bringing uh, quality talks like this to the community.